Windy City Rehab has connected with viewers like few other HGTV shows have. The series follows interior designer Allison Victoria as she renovates rundown homes throughout her native Chicago. Viewers may think they know everything there is to know about the show, but there's plenty to learn. For Allison Victoria, Windy City Rehab is more than just a home improvement show. It's the fulfillment of her childhood dream to beautify the streets of Chicago, one historic home at a time. Growing up, my dad used to take us driving around the city, and I would see all these houses, and I just would like dream of living in one of them one day. But according to her, getting the opportunity to be the one who rehabs so many of these homes is an even bigger dream come true. It's something in which the lifelong Chicagoan takes immense pride. I want to make sure that this city is absolutely just sprinkled with beautiful homes that it, it really was once known for. Windy City Rehab is an outgrowth of Allison Victoria's love of Chi-Town Heritage Houses, and when she was able to buy one herself, she made it her mission to restore the property to its former glory. Speaking in a Q&A with Roku, Victoria spoke about her very first reno. I lived in an old historic home in Wicker Park that was so run down and nobody wanted to touch it. And I did. And I got it and I fixed it. And instead of people running by, they would stop and take photos of this house. And I knew that I wanted to keep doing that on every single street in Chicago. As part of her mission to turn a passion for design into an actual career, Allison left Chicago after high school and attended the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. After graduating, she landed a job at Vegas-based design firm Christopher Holmes, becoming the youngest designer the company had ever hired to that point. Just two years later, she struck out on her own to launch her own design firm, Allison Victoria Interiors. As she put it in an interview with Vegas Magazine, the Las Vegas home building industry was at its peak. The timing couldn't have been more perfect. Whether she's in Las Vegas or the Windy City, her design ethos has been influenced by her beloved hometown. She told Vegas, I guess I would say that I have a more traditional style when it comes to interior design. Coming from Chicago, I grew up with all that history, and that's what I like to reflect in my work. Oddly enough, it was the financial crisis of 2007 that spurred Allison Victoria's journey to HGTV. As she recalled in an interview with House Beautiful, just as her design business was taking off, the economy crashed. She had accepted a job offer in Las Vegas and worked there for five years before she happened to come into contact with a Los Angeles-based production company. The company was seeking designers for a new home improvement show and hired her as a ghost designer for the show House Crashers on the DIY Network. If you're drawing a blank on what a ghost designer even is, don't worry, you're not alone. Victoria explained to House Beautiful, I didn't know what that meant. What that meant was, I do all the work, I get zero credit, and I'm not on television. The job wasn't glamorous, but Victoria saw the possibilities it presented. She said at the 2015 AOL Build series, They were like, you get to design the episode, but we'll never show you on TV, and your logo will be shown for one split second. I was like, done, I'll take it. Because everything's a stepping stone, so I knew that this was a real opportunity. So then when I had that opportunity, I like took it and ran with it. While working behind the scenes on House Crashers, Allison Victoria had an epiphany. As she recalled in an interview with House Beautiful, I was like, wait, they're all dudes. There should be a woman in this space. Now that I had a contact, I was like, I'm going to pitch myself as the first female crasher and do kitchens. And that was it. Producers loved her pitch, hiring her to star in Kitchen Crashers, which ran for nine successful seasons and even led to her joining another series, The Travel Channel's Hotel Impossible. From the outside, Victoria's leap from behind-the-scenes designer to on-air host may seem like it was effortless. But first, she had to overcome her fear of giving up the security of a steady paycheck in order to pursue a risky opportunity. As she said in an interview with A Drink With, you have to be scared. If you're not scared, then what is it worth? I was so scared to quit my job. I was 22, making a lot of money, but I was not happy. While working on Kitchen Crashers, Allison Victoria met contractor and fellow Chicago native Donovan Eckhart. When Eckhart appeared on three episodes of the show, the two realized they had many mutual friends, leading them to strike up a friendship of their own. As Eckhart recalled to Sophisticated Living, one night we went to a Blackhawks game and started talking about renovating old buildings, and we decided there and then to do it. I still remember us laughing and saying, let's buy a building. The pair put together a sizzle reel for HGTV, pitching a show in which they would buy decrepit Chicago properties to renovate and then sell. 
HGTV loved the concept, and shortly after, Victoria and Eckhart were shooting the new series. Victoria told Sophisticated Living of their goal for the show, saying, "...we're building homes that look like they could have been there for the last hundred years. We don't leave one single detail unturned. We're meticulous in the way we build. I'm meticulous in the way I design." Buying rundown heritage houses to renovate and then flip offers the potential for big rewards, but also carries with it some serious risks. Sometimes those risks don't pay off. Alice and Victoria admitted in an interview with Parade, "...not all of the rehabs make money. Some of them I actually have to pay our investor back at the end." Landing a big payday at the completion of a renovation is always preferred, but she believes the projects she undertakes on Windy City Rehab are about more than just money. She told Parade, "...the best part of the job is about making homes that people can be proud to grow up in, doing work she hopes others can be inspired by, just like she was when she was a young girl." How old do you think you were when you designed your first space? Eleven. It was my best friend's room. So we pulled all the carpet up, got to the hardwood, sanded them down, <laughs> painted them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Windy City Rehab turned out to be a hit for HGTV, becoming one of the network's highest-rated freshman series. Steadily climbing viewer numbers demonstrated that people were coming back to the show week after week, and they were apparently telling their friends to tune in, too. Deadline pointed out that Windy City Rehab was HGTV's number one series overall in the 25 to 34 age demographic, in addition to landing in the top 10 of all cable series among women 25 to 54. Within a month of its January 2019 premiere, the show attracted more than 9.3 million viewers, prompting HGTV to renew the show for a second season. Viewers of Windy City Rehab don't always see the whole story. Speaking with Architectural Digest, Chicago designers Kristen Petro and Michael Del Piero explained how the series only shows viewers a fraction of what actually occurs. We show you everything, even the stuff that, you know, isn't fun or profitable. It's just raw. Del Piero had mixed feelings, saying, "...I love that the design shows are happening because it has allowed us to access a clientele that maybe wouldn't have considered using an interior designer." The negative side is that the TV crews don't show what goes into all of this. I don't think TV depicts all the decisions that pop up and require us to change course. People don't even realize when they're trying to flip a place that this is what could happen. It's understandable why a TV show would gloss over mundane elements and focus on a reno's more dramatic aspects. But Petro cautioned viewers that what they're seeing is more entertainment than reality. She explained, "...I often tell people that if they were to walk into our office at any given time, they would just see people typing quietly at their computers for the majority of their day. It would be a very boring show if someone really showed what we did." There's plenty of drama in each episode of Windy City Rehab, but there's even more drama behind the scenes. Residents living near one of the series' homes were not happy about having a home improvement series filmed on their street in March 2019. They complained about early morning noise, alleging that work crews were starting well before they were legally allowed to. Said one neighbor, "...you can't start until 8 a.m. They start sooner, and then they all pretend they don't know. They were doing brickwork with the saws and doing all kinds of things before 8 a.m., and the dust was going everywhere. They were clearly on a very aggressive timetable." Eckhart responded to the complaint, saying, "...we're trying our absolute best to be the best neighbors we can. I understand it's frustrating to live next to construction. But at the end of the day, I think we're doing really good work." I'm a neighbor. I live in Bucktown, and I'm proud to drive by every single home we've done." In July 2019, one of Windy City Rehab's projects received multiple citations for violating city ordinances, including some regarding the time constraints for when construction work is supposed to begin and end each day. As the Chicago Sun-Times reported, that particular project was hit with two stop work orders after officials determined there had been multiple violations. While the show was also cited for construction jobs that were being undertaken without first acquiring the necessary building permits. Things were moving, but now we're stopped, so we're just losing time. According to the newspaper, Chicago Department of Building spokesman Greg Cunningham said officials from his department would be meeting with builder Donovan Eckhart to make the concerns heard and ensure that the city's standards are being met, and that might include removing Eckhart and his construction crews from the show in its second season. Can everyone flip a house? No. This is not stuff that anybody can do. In January 2020, House Beautiful reported that the lawsuits had prompted Victoria to cut ties with Eckhart and set up shop with a new team of general contractors. 
Cunningham also stated that Victoria had taken steps to comply with the department's concerns. He told the Chicago Sun-Times, she is making an effort to clean her permit applications up. We appreciate the efforts to come into compliance. With Donovan Eckhart's contractor permit suspended and new contractors brought in to complete home renovations for the second season of Windy City Rehab, it seems clear that his involvement with the series is over. For now, Victoria insists the second season is in the works, but so far, it's not exactly off to a smooth or prompt start. Production of the second season has been delayed because of the legal issues. Victoria responded to the controversy in an Instagram post in July 2019, insisting that the issues flagged by the department were being addressed. She wrote, I want you to hear it from me directly that I am working closely with the city of Chicago to repair and amend any and all permits with our new general contractors. The building department says they are pleased with our efforts and we will continue to work closely together to move in the right direction. And that is why you don't just get in this game just to try to make a quick dime, because you could end up losing everything. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite reality shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.